Good Monday morning, Mount Olive Church. It's good Monday morning. Heaven is real. Remember, when I say that, that changes my perspective about the troubles of this life, the sufferings, knowing that heaven is on the horizon and heaven is a real place that I'm really going to go to in just a few moments, a few days, a few life moments, we will be heading to our eternal home. So there's hope in that. It also motivates me to be on mission. If there's someone I know today that is not sure that they're going to make it to heaven, then Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And I'm going to share that with them because I want us to go to heaven together. That's what we learned yesterday in our sermon. Uh, so we just want to remind you that every morning you're going to say heaven is real. That is your challenge. Notice I'm wearing my Alabama hat. Roll tie. They won again. And so this Monday, we also want to be reminded of that. All right, let's get to our devotion. Now, our devotion is going to be this week on John 3, 16. I don't know if there's not another scripture that is as popular as this scripture. I don't know if, uh, you, you know, if there's hardly anybody that's never been exposed to John 3, 16. But we're going to break it apart each day and look at the many different points. Uh, that you can find in this verse. And so we're reminded that this verse came out of a discussion between Jesus and the man named Nicodemus. Now, Nicodemus was a religious teacher himself, and it's odd that he would come to a Galilean carpenter's son for advice on how to get to heaven, but he really wanted to know that question, how can one get to heaven? Jesus, reading what was in his mind, gave him this this very exclusive and abrupt statement, John 3 and 3, except a man be born again, second born, born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He'll never be in the kingdom of heaven unless we are of the second born nation. I've had a birth that I couldn't remember, but I've certainly had a birth that I'll never forget the day that Jesus touched me. Being born again, and so Nicodemus then, you know, he questioned this, and he said, how can a man be born again? Can he enter into his mother's womb a second time? You know, is that possible? And Jesus begins to, to discuss with him how, how one can be born again, made new, a new man or woman today. If you've never been born again, I, I really want to encourage you today to accept Christ as your Savior. And so we get to this verse 14 and 15 where Jesus is explaining to Nicodemus the purpose of the cross. And so in verse 14, he says, and as Moses was lifted up, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. And what he's talking about here is that uh, there had been fiery serpents that had been let loose through the nation. They were poisonous serpents. And in response to their rebellion, many were getting sick by that poisoning and dying. And so God instructed Moses to take the figure of a serpent put it on a pole, and set it up in the air. And anybody who looked upon that in faith, right, believing that God, uh, looking up to God as the, as the healer, Jehovah Rophi, the healer, uh, as, as they would lift that up, okay, then they would know uh, that, uh, that, that they would be healed. So as Moses lifted up that serpent in the wilderness, he says, now he's making that comparison to the cross, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up on the cross. The disease of sin and self and flesh, uh, fleshly desires, that disease has, has eaten us up. We have been poisoned in our own nature, and we can't overcome it. But the moment we look to the cross, the moment we look to Jesus, and we accept that he died on the cross for our sins, that's it. That is the moment that we get healed from the inside out. And so that's what he's explaining, the new birth. And so then he says, so looking up on that serpent, looking up off the cross, looking up at the cross of Jesus, is the same as saying that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Perish meaning be destroyed, to be lost, to be marred. Uh, it means to be in uh, eternal punishment. He shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now he brings the summation. So here's the summation, the summation statement of this discussion. You know, when you end the discussion, you say, okay, here is the big statement. And here it is. So in that discussion, he says what? For God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son. This explains it all, the new birth, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's the introduction to this week's devotion, right? Out of that conversation came this most powerful verse of the gospel that gives us so many different avenues of the gospel. And so I'm going to take the first two words, for God. That's it. That's all we're going to look at today in our devotion. For God. For God. I believe as A.W. Tozer believes, if we would bring back spiritual power in our lives and our communities, we must begin to think of God more nearly as he truly is. I'm reminded of the little boy that uh, he was working diligently on a drawing uh, in his class. And the teacher came over to the young boy and said, little boy, he said his name, little Jimmy, what are you drawing? And he says, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the teacher says, but no, it's just smiled and responded to him. The teacher smiled and responded and said, but nobody knows what God looks like, little Jimmy. The boy carefully put down his crayon, looked her squarely in the eyes, and declared, but they'll know when I'm finished. Isn't that good stuff? Do you know God as a little boy knows uh, his father? Do, do you know God in that personal way? And are you willing to let others find out who he is through your life? A well-known Englishman, Anthony Collins of the 17th century, was walking one day, and he crossed paths with a commoner. Where are you going? asked Collins. To church, sir. What are you going to do there? To worship God, sir. Is your God a great or little God? asked Collins. He is both, sir. Collins asked, how can he be both? The man responded, he is so great, sir, that the heaven of heavens cannot contain him. Yet so little, that he can dwell in my heart. Collins later declared that this simple answer had more effect on his mind than all the volumes that he had ever read about God or lectures he had heard. In other words, I want to talk, I want us to zero in on this statement for God for just a moment for Monday morning. For God. You know, whether it was the rebellion of Israel in the wilderness, through sickness, disease, through the evil of the world. One thing that need to be uh, remembered for God, for God. You see this statement, just like in the beginning, God created these statements like this in the Bible. They don't explain the existence of God. They just clearly declare the existence of God, that God is apart from you, me, any powers that be God is, he is not dependent he is above all things, and he is most pow powerful. For God, that's what it says. It declares the existence of God in that statement, that God is real, that there is a God, no matter what. No matter who becomes the leaders of the nations, no matter what the pandemics may come, no matter what the struggles we may face, we must be reminded on Monday morning for God. He's above it all. It declares the powerful existence of God, for God. And then it also lets us in, as we're knowing, just focusing on God a little bit, as A.W. Tozer said, that would bring spiritual power in our lives. Not only does for God declare the existence of God, remember, there's still a God. There's still a God, no matter you know, I know a lot of people over the last few weeks and months say, if God is God, then why is he allowing this to happen? I want to remind you, God is still God. He's still sitting on his throne for God. And then second, we find the motivation of God. What is the motivation of God? The motivation here of God uh, is that uh, he, wants the, he wants men to be born again. He wants to provide a way right? For people to be saved. He wants to give the avenue for people to make it to the kingdom of heaven. The motivation of God is that he wants to be in personal relationship with man. So man must be born again. Man must come out of their sin. Man uh, is in sin as a slave to sin and cannot save himself for God. Man wants to know God for God. You know, notice how we can put that statement in there. And so what we find is that God's motivation is that he wants to know 
man. He wants man to enter in to a restored relationship with him. That's why it says for God. God is getting ready to do something, right? No matter what, God is still God. He exists. It's been declared through the Bible. You know, it doesn't explain the existence of God. It declares the existence of God. And the existence of God is shown in the Bible. There's evidences. There's proofs such as all the different prophecies that's been fulfilled, there must be a God, such as the heavens declare his glory, the machinery of the creation, the beauty and creativity of creation, the interworkings of all creation, all point to an intellectual designer. That God exists, right? And then in this verse, it says that God is motivated for man to be saved, for man to come into relationship with him. Uh, for God, right? Man was hopeless, but for God, but God, you know, I love, I love that phrase in the Bible too, but God committed his love toward us, right? We were dead in our trespasses of sin, but God, who was rich in mercy, God is motivated, and he's motivated for you this Monday morning, and he's motivated for me, and he wants to have a relationship with you today, so ever close. For God declares the existence of God, declares the motivation of God. And, and, and isn't that what the Bible says, 1 Timothy 2 and 4, who will have all men to be saved? That's the motivation. And to come into the knowledge of truth. That's the God I'm talking about. Or 2 Peter 3 and 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. As men, some men count slackness. But he, but he is long-suffering to usward not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. It declares the existence of God. It declares the motivation of God, that he would not have any man to be lost for eternity. And then alas, the it declares the mission of God, the mission of God. That's what it says. For God, he's going to do something. For God, he's going to initiate it. For God, he's going to have something done about men being lost in their sin. And that's exactly what Second Corinthians uh Second Corinthians 5, uh, in verse 20, uh, in verse, I'm sorry, 19 says, to wit, or summary, God was in Christ. This goes right along John 3, 16. God was in Christ reconciling, saving, bringing men back out of the world, right? Reconciling the world unto himself, because God's motivation is to be in relationship with man, so he does something about it. He comes on a rescue mission to reconcile the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed now to us, the church, the word of reconciliation. And so uh, we find for God, and that's as far as we're going to go today. It declares the existence of an all-powerful God who is still on his throne, even though we may not understand because of the workings of what's going on in our world, but he's still God on his throne. It tells us about the motivation of God. That in summary, what Christ is telling Nicodemus, we understand that the motivation behind it all is that God wants man in relationship with him and heaven with him. And so then lastly, it tells us that for God has went about on a mission, right? To save sinful and lost men, to reconcile them back to him. What a great Monday morning focus for us this morning, to focus on God. He's still God sitting on his throne. Don't doubt it. He loves you so much. His motivation is for us to be saved. And not just that, but he's done something about it. Tune in for the rest of the week, uh, and you'll find out what the rest of that uh, would be about. We love you, Mount Olive. We pray and hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Monday.